The condition, congenital telophase equinal varus, is perhaps best known uh, by its more common name of clubfoot. And I can tell you before we go any further, the doctor in question hates that term, but we had to put it in so that you knew what we were talking about. It's a condition that affects about a two in every 1,000 newborns and is noticeable from the awkward angle a child's feet is turned at. However, while the sight of something wrong with your newborn's feet is dreadful for any parent, there is a solution out there which can help. With us now is mother Adrian Kennedy, Campion and consultant Dr. Michael Stevens. Good morning to you both. Morning. Adrian, we have to tell you, everyone at TV3 knows Adrian very well. She's a lovely hair and makeup artist that we've loved for many years here, and I've come to know recently and love to. And you started telling me about Jodie just doing my hair and makeup, and that's how we came here. And you were yeah. saying how tough it was watching him in pain and the frustration he was suffering with the treatment he was initially given. Yeah, he, uh, he was, well firstly he was born by cesarean section. Everything was fine and great and Paul went home to tell the family we had a lovely new brother. And uh, it was four hours later that I discovered when changing his nappy that uh, there was something severely wrong with his feet. So it was five days after that then that um, we met Mr. Stevens and his team where they diagnosed bilateral talipase. Uh, which means he, both of his feet were affected. I think because I was hormonal, I was just devastated. Of course you would. Uh, I, know, I know to a lot of mothers out there it might seem trivial, it's only his feet, when a lot of people are dealing with much more serious things. But everything is relative. And you know me, and Mark knows me, I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> and it was the greatest kick in the bum that yeah. me and my husband ever got, you know. So it, it was really tough and it was devastating. But Well, Adrian, I mean, the thing is, it, it, funny enough, um, I have a brother who suffered from it as well. And I know that the initial reaction was, and I, Doctor, I, I, I know you hate this term, but you go, the child has a club foot, he's going to be a cripple. Now, this is completely wrong, of course, but it, it, this is the sort of the received wisdom. And I'm sure, even though, uh, you know, modern parents might have a, a different attitude, that thought obviously went through your mind. It, my child is not going to be able to walk properly. That was the first thing, because to be honest with you, when I opened his baby grow, I saw flippers. I didn't see feet. I, and I couldn't understand how we weren't told, and that was put down to human error. But once we started to accept it, and we met Mr. Stevens in the hospital, uh, and he told us it was more or less 98% correctable, but that it was going to be a really long road. And it, it has been. Jody is 10 months old, which surprises me every day, because I honestly feel he's two. Yeah. Like, so much he work. Like he's too much. <laughs> he's a solid little boy. So much work has gone into him. Nobody will know unless you live behind our door, you know. But it has been a long road, Edwin. So talk us through, okay. like, briefly, you know, what, what you had to do. What, I took him home. Judy, what you had to put I with. took him home at five days old after we, we visited Mr. Stevens in the hospital. And that day that I took him home, I took him home in splints with... With all I can describe, it has this big metal S hooks at the end of its feet. We actually have shots of uh, of of of, of and it was just, days. It was we'll just so that. awkward to lift him to carry him, and I was breastfeeding. Uh, he was clicking them together, and he would he just he cried and cried and cried. So that was for about. We can uh, see them there, the ones you're talking them, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were they were just they were a nightmare. So he was in those for about three weeks, and then he went into plaster of Paris, where his legs were literally <coughs> plastered in a bed position. Which is that, those there. Now that's very heavy to carry. You're, you have to imagine this is a tiny baby, you know, really tiny, crying all the time. Uh, he had surgery then at five weeks where they uh, snipped the tendon in the back of his heel to allow the heel to drop. And his feet started to, to uh, <laughs> correct almost straight away. But um, he was then put in boots and a bar the white boots that you see there with the bar, and they just weren't great. They were extremely hard to put on. He had friction, friction burns, he had blisters, and they were on for 23 hours a day. The child couldn't kick independently, so therefore he was constipated. He just constantly was crying. He couldn't fit in a regular car seat because of, this, of the span, so he was awkward. So anywhere I went, he, he just screamed, cried all the time. So obviously I tried not to, not to have to go anywhere. But weeks just felt like months. Uh, a month felt like a year um, because he was so unhappy, so uncomfortable. I thought he was itchy. I didn't know what was going on. He's, he's remarkably um, um, but this is easy Dr. going Stevens. and smiley and no. I mean, so, so you know, it's had a good outcome in that, in that regard. Doctor, um, tell us about, th there's, I, I mean, I was talking to you earlier on about my brother. Forty odd years ago, I, 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 you know, they had to wear calipers and they, they, 